Hey guys and welcome to this episode of Quite Frankly. Now, I want to start this episode with something weird. Now, let's say I'm a cook and you're a cook and we're going to prepare a steak and I'm giving you exactly the same meat from the same cow. I'm giving you exactly the same ingredients to the microgram exactly the same. And I will tell you one thing. Tomorrow at 6 o'clock I want to have the perfect steak and you can't have anything left. So everything I give you, you have to use. So we both have exactly the same ingredients, the same everything. Will both steaks be the same? No, of course not. All the steaks will be different because we're different cooks, right? Now, if you look at the raw files as meat and what you do with the raw files as ingredients, it makes sense, right, that if you process a raw file, that it can be different from every raw converter. Now, this is one of the reasons why, and don't get me wrong, I love Lightroom. I use Lightroom for my cataloging, for the book module. Lightroom is awesome. But for my raw conversion, I use Capture One or DxO Optics. And in this video, I'm going to show you very quickly why I love using Capture One. And in another video, I'll show you the same thing about DxO Optics. Okay, guys, let's talk a little bit about why I use Capture One. Now, in the next video, I will go a little bit more in depth for some functions of Capture One, but now I just want to show you very fast what I really like about Capture One. And again, I use Lightroom for almost everything else. I use my Lightroom for cataloging, the book module, uh, you can print from it, the maps, uh, keywording, smart albums, whatever. But Capture One as a raw converter, in my opinion, is superior to Lightroom. But also for tethering. Now, Lightroom does tether, but it's a little bit limited in what it can do compared to Capture One. Now, the first thing you will see when you connect your camera is that it will recognize your camera. And it recognizes a lot of cameras, from medium format to Nikon, Sony, Canon, almost, well, a lot of brands. If you look on their website, you can see if your camera is supported. The other thing that I really like is the Capture Pilot. Now, the Capture Pilot will actually start a, a server on your main computer. And if you have an iPad, iPhone, or any other device that will actually have a web browser, you can access the images that were shooting during the shoot. And you can also label those images. So if you have your client and you say to your client, can you please tell me which images you really like? On his iPhone or iPad, he can actually mark the images. And you don't have to be on the same Wi-Fi network. If you have a client overseas, he or she can also see the images if you give him access to your server, of course. So this is a very powerful unit, Capture Pilot. The other thing that I like in the retouching is if you go here, you can see that we have something called layers. Now you can stack those layers on top of each other. And what you can do in those layers, that's pretty nice. If we look at this image of Nadine, you can see that we have a little bit of, well, a little bit too less detail in the blacks over here, in the shadow areas. I added a layer, and what I actually did is I just opened them up a little bit. Now, I will show you the mask, and what you can see is that I just painted in here, and I just opened up the shadows. And because it's a raw converter, I can keep changing this, and let's say I want a little bit less highlights. In this case, that won't work, but let's say a little bit more exposure. And all these settings I can use inside that layer. Okay, let's turn the mask off again. There we go. The brush you can actually also change. If you have a Wacom tablet, you can just use the dial to change the size. And of course, you can change the softness also of the brush. So hardness, opacity, and size. And you can use pen pressure. Okay. Now, the next thing that I really like is the looks. Always when I do an image, I don't like it to be straight out of the camera. I wanted to give it an extra look. I love analog photography, and sometimes I just don't like the digital quality files. It's, it's great, don't get me wrong, but some things, well, it just doesn't look right, so I want to give that extra look. Now, in Lightroom and Photoshop, I will use plugins like Alien Skin Exposure, Mac Fun DxO, and, well, whatever plugin you want to use to give it a certain tint, it's okay. But in Capture One, I'm using it straight from the RAW converter, which gives me a lot more range. Now, of course, you can create presets, like I did here. 
uh, for example a black and white cold steel but let's say we go for this one and I well, like this but it's not perfect now remember we're in a raw converter you just go back here and you can change whatever you want let's say I want in the red channel a little bit more warmth but I also want a little bit more contrast and there we go now a little bit less saturation so y you can keep playing with this and it's all non-destructive and it doesn't take up any space on your hard drive now, I really like this shot but I want to see how it looks in black and white what you can now do is you can just very simple make a new variant and for example do that one in black and white there we go now this variant doesn't take up any hard drive space well it does but it's very very small on your hard drive and now you can compare the two and this is really cool because now if let's say you have six or seven variants it doesn't take up any hard drive space and if your client says I like them all then when you do the processing to your final image that's when you get the final images with all these different looks but now they don't take up any room on my hard drive okay now another thing that's really nice about Capture One is the processing for example you see here that I have um, a TIFF in which I create a TIFF on my hard drive it's TIFF Pro Photo 300 and it will actually store it on my hard drive as a final image I can do the same thing for internet only now I make a JPEG I do an 82 um, I use this as my longest edge and there's a logo inside which you can see now and it actually places the logo inside but I can also do let's say an Adobe RGB version and the fun part is if I select them all I will just press process you can grab a cup of coffee or whatever you drink and when you're back all four recipes will be done in other words you will have a JPEG you will have a TIFF and you will have one with your logo so you don't have to do it separately now when you want to go to Photoshop I created a recipe for this with the open with Photoshop option so it will open up Photoshop straight after the conversion I can work on my image and store it and it's back in my Capture One folder another thing that's really nice about Capture One is the so-called overlay option now let's say you have a client and he wants you to shoot a magazine cover and he will give you the cover of the magazine now the main problem is how do you shoot your image that it will really fit and shows nice on the cover right well just use the overlay function I created a fake cover I will now show and here you will see the text here you will see the index and here you will see something else that's on the cover now I can actually move this around and let's say oh, I really like this layout and stop and what I can now do is keep shooting and all the images that come in will show up in this cover now if your client doesn't give you a cover that has a so-called transparent background you can still change the opacity so you can use any image you want of course you won't see your own image now that clear but that's no problem at all at least you can see how it looks on the cover and now something that I use a lot during photo shoots I want to see if my focus is 100% correct right and I want to see it fast now one of the things that I don't like particularly about Lightroom is the speed in which it shows you the 100% preview Capture One is blazingly fast if we go to the loop and you just press here there we go it's already in focus now and remember we're now screen recording this and I'm doing a little bit of rendering on the background and Capture One keeps going very very fast so this is nice but if you don't want to go to your computer every time and press the loop there's of course another option and this one is really cool you can go to view and you can actually say view my of show my focus mask now everything that's rendered green in the image is what capture one thinks is 100% in focus now this is not 100% accurate but trust me it's pretty accurate now why is this important well if you're shooting an autofocus lens you will probably hit the focus pretty pretty good however I'm often shooting with lens babies or with a digital back on an analog camera that doesn't have any autofocus lenses in that case it's very very cool that from the other side of the studio I can actually see if my image is in focus 
Now imagine working with a tilt and shift lens and you can immediately see where your focus is as soon as the image comes in. This is an incredibly powerful and very, very valuable tool. And this is something I would love to see in other software like in Lightroom. So I won't go into depth about everything you can do with Capture One. I just wanted to show you very quickly why I use Capture One and why I love it. In the next video, I will show you a little bit more about what I do with Capture One. But for now, thank you for watching and see you in the next episode of Quite Frankly.